Welcome back everybody, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Today we're gonna to be doing an updated mock draft. This is gonna be my updated one. I think I made a bunch of changes um, and I think this one is gonna be a little bit better suited to helping the team get the players that they need to get in order to move on to the, 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 the pathway that we want, which is getting to the Super Bowl and you know, doing great in the playoffs, all that stuff. So I did a couple of shift ups just because I believe there's so many running backs in this class and there's so many more needs that we need than to use our top pick on that. We'll see, you know, I could be wrong, but I think there are some other players that we could get that could really help out this team. And, uh, you know, this is how it's going to go. So pick number one, which is our second round pick, which is number 51. I want to go with Luke Whipler, Wipler, something like that. Um, he's going to be a center for Ohio State, and the knock on him is, you know, there's a bunch of other offensive linemen that are coming out in this draft that are really big maulers, and they're just strong and beastly and all that stuff, whereas Luke Whipler, he's just kind of, honestly, he's just not going to be that guy. He's just a really solid, solid center. He just stands people up. You know, he does his job. He's not going to run anybody over, and he's not going to be super quick, so the combine probably will affect him too. But he's just going to be a solid center that has been really good for Ohio State. Uh, he, he really helped out his quarterback you know, when it came to pass coverages and things like that. And I think with our first pick, I think that would probably be the best all-around player. What we could do if we get Luke Whipler is we can then send Connor Williams to guard, which is better suited for him. And we would have a guy that has been doing snaps most of his life, and he knows how to snap the ball better. You know, there were a, a couple of issues with Connor Williams in the snap, and I think getting a true center and then having, you know, somebody behind him would really alleviate some of the problems. And then, like I said, you, for me, I just I would get that right tackle in free agency. You know, I, I think that would probably be the best fit for this team. So Luke Whipler, really solid, really, really solid center, and I think he could really grow with Tua and we would have that true center and allow Connor Williams to be on that left side. And then that left side would just be stacked. It would be ridiculous. And then of course you'd have Robert Hunt on the right guard and then have a solid person on the right tackle. And it would just make the offensive line complete. And we would have young players and veterans working together to make progress. We're gonna go to our second pick, which is in the third round. And I think it's 77 that we would have this pick. And I was doing some thinking because, you know, uh, there's running backs there. There's a lot of stuff. But I think this player, um, now, again, I'm hoping that he comes to us. I think people will, you know, mistake him for being too green. But Dion Henley, he is going to be a really good linebacker. We can get him in the third round because we need a pass coverage linebacker. And we'll see what Channing Tindall does. Not really sure what he's going through right now and could be a really good linebacker to go along with whoever we get in free agency, but Dion Henley used to play wide receiver, which means that he understands route concepts, he understands offense, and he understands how the offense is playing. So when that comes to the linebacker position, he is very good in coverage because he understands what receivers are trying to do. He used to be one. So now, and from here on out, he's going to really understand offense in a way that is difficult for most defensive full-time players to understand because he used to play the other position. Again, he is new, so he might fall to the third round, which I think it would be an excellent pickup if we pick him up right there because he's really good at tackling for someone that transitioned from receiver to linebacker. He's really going to be a steal at the position. He's fast. He's physical. And he's smart. He uses his smarts. He had an interception. He has force fumble. Um, and uh, it, it, the guy would just be a great pickup. And I think he could learn under whoever we get in free agency. And I think, honestly, you could groom him to be the linebacker that we have for the next nine years. I think he would be a very good pickup. 
Now, the last one, which everybody has been wanting me to do a running back. This is where I would pick up a running back. There are so many running backs in this class and so many good ones. And to be honest, I feel like there are so many other needs um, that we could meet because in free agency, we'll see what we do. I think that 83rd pick in the third round, I think that's where you go for running back. And my pickup would be Kendra Miller. I think he is a stud. I think I'm not really understanding why people are sleeping on him. Uh, I just really can't fathom it. I'm watching his tape and I, I just, he, he looks amazing, you know? I mean, honestly, he didn't play in, the, in the, the championship game and it really hurt the other team. It really hurt TCU. It really hurt them. It could tell because they, they just didn't have a running game without him. Um, Kendry Miller is one of those guys. He's, I think, 215, 220, 510, 511. Um, and he's just, or sorry, six foot. He is just, he reminds me of like a Kareem Hunt or like one of those types of players. He just runs so hard and he's so shifty. Like, it's crazy to see somebody that's 220 to be this shifty where I see him just alleviate himself from any defender in his range. You have to have multiple guys to take him down because he's just so quick and so agile. I've even seen him where he is so aggressive running that people will trip him up and there's a run where he just puts his hand into the ground and pushes himself right back up. Most running backs will go down at that point. I just think he's a stud. I think you get him in the third round. I think people are sleeping on him. We'll see what happens with the combine because I feel like he's really going to increase his, his, his draft stock at the combine, but we'll see. He's fast. I mean, he's burnt people down to the touchdown and he, he just jukes around you so easily. And then he'll power through you as well. He just, he has everything. They didn't use him as a pass catcher too much, but there's plenty of times where he could have been a great pass catcher in that team. They just didn't use him like that because he catches the ball and he's, he's one of the hardest people to bring down. So Kendra Miller would be my pick, but you have Kendra Miller, you have um, Tajay Spears, which is another burner, and he's a really good, he's, Tulane was ranked this year, and I think they were ranked mostly because he was just such an elite running back that they made it hard for any team to really game plan against him. Tajay Spears is a great pass catcher too, and he's very shifty as well. Now, he's not as big as Kendra Miller, um, but like I said, another burner guy that, I mean, once he gets the ball in the backfield and you don't lay hands on him, he's gone. He's going to be down the field in two seconds. He is uh, another stud that, because he went to a smaller college, I don't know if he's gonna go as high, and I think you get him in the third round and you're getting a starting running back out of any of these guys. Tajay Spears is another one of my favorites. Kendrick Miller is my favorite. Tajay Spears is a great favorite of mine. This last running back in the third round, I think he he reminds me honestly of like a Adrian Peterson. Uh, he was B. John Robinson's backup, which if you know who B. John Robinson, he is gonna be the first running back taken off the board. His backup also looked like a stud. I mean, he, barrels through people and he is he like i said he just he looks like another adrian peterson type where he is six foot one 225 and he is very fast for his size and he hurdles over people he stiff arms people he's run through people i mean when he puts his head down he's running through you it, it, it's it's incredible to see that this was the backup to b john robinson Hands down, if he goes to any other collegiate team, he's going to be the starter anywhere. Uh, the guy was, I mean, it's incredible. Like, Bijan Robinson would come off the field, and it's like, you're honestly really not losing a step because he would come in, and it would just be the brawler that would just come in and just run you over. There's a lot of Saquon Barkley and Bijan Robinson. It's a lot of, like, Adrian Peterson when it comes to Roshan Johnson. And he just, I mean, he's going to fall just because he was the backup to Bijan, but... I mean, the guy just looks like he's going to be an elite, elite. Like, uh, the pass catching, he could get better at. But if you just want a running back that just goes, just like Adrian Peterson, you know, he's not going to catch the ball a lot. But if you want a running back that's just going to, like, wear the defense down, this is the guy that you want to pick up. The sixth round pick that we have, because we're going to go 2-3, and then it goes straight down to 6. Um, not really sure what number this is, but... We'll see if we can get this guy at this late, uh, but 
he plays for a really small college. I gotta remember, I'll pop it up on the the screen when you look at this part, but Andre Iosivas or Iosovas, he is he's a receiver that is for a very, very small, small time college. And he is fast. So you get a pick for Jakeem Grant, which used to be a return guy. We need a return guy. We don't really have a return guy. I think with the sixth round, you pick this guy up, and I'm promising you, he's probably going to run like a 4-3, a something like that. He's fast. And then you get your return guy in the sixth round. And I think that you're set up for success with that type of draft. You don't have many draft picks, but I think you have all of your draft picks. And then in the seventh round, I'm saying a, a kicker or... Uh, probably a kicker, you know, name your price and whatever kicker that you want to get. But yeah, this is going to be the mock draft that I think would set us up with the most success. You get your center, you can move things around with the offensive line, and then you get your linebacker that's going to set you up for success for years to come. And then you get your running back that you've wanted, you know, you get the running back because like I said, this class is filled with running backs. I don't think you need to take a running back in the very, very first part because I think just by pure numbers that running backs are going to fall to the second and third round i think you get your running back then and then you get your return man late in the draft and you're set up for success for this next year you get whatever you need in free agency like the right tackle and then you know a middle linebacker or safety and then you're good to go you're, you're set up for success you have young players you got veterans you got everybody contributing in a way that they can and i think you have two coaches that can maximize everybody's potential so this is going to be the 2.0 of the mock draft. We'll see if I make any changes to it. Probably will. But as always, hope you enjoyed this content. Um, again, hit that like, hit that subscribe, comment if you have any players that you wanted me to kind of go over there and say, no, this guy would definitely be better. But hope you have a great rest of your day. As always, fins up. Peace.